Hello class, in this video I'm going to do exercise 6.19. This is a formal proof uh, in which we have two premises, A or B, and not B or C, and then we have to prove A or C. If you look at the main connectives of the information that you're given, they're both disjunctions, so we know we're going to have to do proof by cases, without a doubt. Look at your pre uh, conclusion, A or C. We're going to eventually have to do some disjunction intro to get this as well, but the simple-minded plan would be to say, all right, let's prove one of, these, one of these, like let's prove A, and then we'll just get A or C by disjunction intro uh, on our final line. Well, that's not going to work in general because that would be too easy. Uh, we can't prove A from these premises alone and then just add or C to it. A doesn't follow from these premises. Ditto C alone. So we're going to have to do something a little more interesting. We're going to have to do disjunction intro, but it just won't be the last line of the proof. Somewhere along the way, we're going to have to use that idea. Now, we know we have to do proof by cases when we have disjunctive premises, but do, are we going to have to do first premise one, let's do a case for A and a case for B, and then we'll turn to premise two? The answer is no, because we're not going to have four independent subproofs. Otherwise, we would just be extracting information like our conclusion from premise one alone, and we wouldn't even need to appeal to premise two. That's not going to work. So when you start working through the steps, you're going to see that whenever you have multiple disjunctions, you're going to have to do proof by cases within other proof by cases. Let's see how that's going to go. So here's a Fitch proof with my uh, <clears throat> premises already in it and my goal sentence down here, A or C. I'm going to start a subproof and just pick one of these to start with. It makes sense just to start with the first premise, but that really doesn't matter. So I'm going to start a subproof with A. And what am I trying to prove, A or C? Well, this is my easy one. I can just do this immediately um, because A or C actually does follow from A. So here, disjunction intro, you see, I'm going to appeal to it, but just not... At the last line of my proof, I'm going to appeal to it in certain cases. So I'll just say disjunction intro on that line, and you can see we're making some progress. Okay, so now what I need to do is end that subproof and then start a new one. So I'll start another subproof here. And what do I need to put in this? Well, I started one with A, so I have to have my coordinate, my other subproof, for with B. Otherwise, it's not going to um, check out properly. So now I, oops, uh, I didn't mean to do that. Now I need a subproof with B. Okay, how am I now going to prove A or C here? Now we hit the stumbling block. A or C doesn't follow at all from this, let alone A following or C following. So I'm going to have to appeal to some other information. Clearly, premise two is the thing that I'm going to have to appeal to. How do I appeal to premise two, however, within this B subproof? Well, it just means I need a subproof inside the subproof. So now I'm going to uh, start another subproof here. And what do I put in the assumption line of this subproof? I'm using this information, and the way you use disjunctive information is always proof by cases. So now I need a subproof for this one. My first disjunct is not B, so I need a subproof assuming not B. And now in this subproof, I need to add end it with A or C. <clears throat> this is the slightly counterintuitive case because you might be wondering why does A or C follow from this? You have to remember we're still in the main B subproof. That's the point of this being nested inside the other one. This information is still available to us. So hence we can prove the contradiction symbol because these two things uh, contradict each other and we just get A or C uh, by contradiction elim. So this is just going to be contradiction elim because anything follows from a contradiction. Citing that line and this line is contradiction intro. Citing these uh, two lines that contradict each other. Now we've finished the not B subproof, and we have our conclusion there. We also need to prove it in the C case. Then we can move it out of these two subproofs onto this main subproof line. Then it will be on our conclusion will be proven in both of those, and we can move it from there out to the um, main proof line. So here, what I need to do, I finished my not B subproof. I need to start another subproof for C. So I'm just going to start a subproof and put C here. Now, of course, I can get my conclusion A or C immediately. That's easy. That's just disjunction intro on this line. Remember, I had to add it to the front of C because this has to match that identically. Otherwise, my proof is not going to check out. Now I need to end those subproofs. And on this line, I can write A or C. What's justifying that? It's the fact that I proved it in the not B case and I proved it in the C case. And I know not B or C has to be true. So I'm exporting it out of these two subproofs onto this proof line. So that is just disjunction elim. And what do I have to cite? I'm using this disjunction now. So don't go back to your original disjunction at this point. I'm using this disjunction, line two, uh, and then I'm citing my two subproofs. <clears throat> so that all of this, I'll just show you that this is all working 
just fine. Uh, so this line turns out to be unnecessary. Now let's see what I have. I have uh, my subproofs proven in my A case, I can get A or C, and in my B case, I can now get A or C. So now, from this disjunction, I can just uh, infer my final conclusion. So now I can get A or C on my final line. Notice, uh, if I could make this bigger, it would be helpful. Here we go. So now I have my first two premises. I have my A case, my B case, and now I'm on the main scope line here. A or C is on this line. Uh, I'm exporting it out of my B and my A cases. So this is just disjunction elim citing this disjunction now because I'm moving out of those two subproofs. And then of course I have to cite the subproofs and now everything should be just A-OK. -okay. Notice how many times A or C appears in here. It's appearing many different times and it's getting different justifications in each in different cases as well. Uh, and so you need to uh, understand why we're doing what we're doing uh, because when these multiple sentences appear multiple times, only if you understand why you're doing it here now would you know how to justify it in each of those cases. Okay, so the general point of this video is when you're doing proof by, when you have multiple premises which are disjunctive, you're going to have to do proof by cases for each of them, and oftentimes those are going to be nested inside of each other. Okay, thanks a lot.